Hey guys, uh, DM Scotty here for short tip. I have a really fun um, short tip today. Um, it's doing a web cocoon. Um, so you could use these as spider egg sacs, or there are people in them that uh, the players have to rescue, or there may be monsters in them, um, or spiders, or anything like that. Um, and make your players nervous uh, when these are, are around. Um, it may be just a red herring, so there may not be nothing in it, but you know, it's it, uh, just a decomposed body or treasure or anything like that. So a lot of fun, you know, fun set dressing uh, for your for your dungeons. Uh, and uh, let's go to the table and craft that now. Hey guys, I got another sculpting project for you. That's why I have my uh, air dry air dry clay out. Now, keep in mind, you could use any kind of clay. There's a, a oven baked clay called Sculpely, um, which is really well, which works really well. And um, you can also get Super Sculpely, which is stronger, but it's a little more expensive. Um, so, if your creations aren't going to be put up to any kind of stress, uh, or they're not something that's thin, I, you could just get away with Sculpely. But I like this because it just it just dries overnight. Um, there's no baking. Um, it works just as well. So um, I'm going to use this. Um, and I want to show you these tools. Um, for this for this one, you the, really the only tool you really need is, you can use a butter knife for this, but um, I just wanted to show you this pack of tools I got. Um, I just got this craft store. Um, these are for um, standard wet clay uh, that you would make pottery and stuff. But you can use these for sculpting. You can also get much more um, detailed uh, sculpting instruments, but for the kind of stuff we're doing, this is perfect. This whole set cost me five bucks. So buy this, you'll be set for pretty much all the sculpting you want to do. Um, so what we'll do is um, I will uh, open up my uh, air dry clay. And depending on the size of the cocoon you want, um, you know, is the size you get. So I'm, I'm thinking like a man-sized um, thing. So that seems like a pretty good amount. So I'll go with that. I'll add a little bit more to it. Okay. Now I'm just going to kind of make that into a ball. And then I'm going to zoom in a bit so you can see the detail that I'm doing. So here, my, here we go, here's my uh, piece of clay. I'm gonna make a little more um, oblong. So I'll just kinda do it like that. Okay, that's the uh, pretty much the shape I want. So now I'm gonna use the tool that has a kind of a sharpened edge on it. Um, and then I'm just gonna kinda You can roll it or you can Kind of just back and forth. You're trying to get that texture of um, kind of spun wit, spun webs. That's what you're going for. Now you don't really have to worry too much about the bottom because you're going to be uh, that's going to be laying down. But you could very easily make this stand up if you wanted. So I'm just back and forth on this. Just kind of rolling it. And at the edges, I'm just giving it some. So now I'll just finish this up with some this last detail is just get around the edge there, underneath, they're happy with it. There we go, that's looking pretty good. All right, so let me give you a closer look at that. So we will let that uh, dry and then we'll uh, finish it up.
Here's my web cocoon. I'll give you a little closer look. Uh, it's uh, been spray painted to uh, the base black. So now I'm going to use a cinnamon color, which is kind of like a tan, and I'm going to use a, uh, a very flexible brush, and I'm going to dry brush um, the tan on. So I'll just kind of streak it over the the cocoon. All right, I'm not trying to fill it in. I'm letting some of the black uh, go come through. Um, but I'm just giving it kind of a variance of shade color. Sorry, it's a little difficult to hold on to. It's a rounded shape. Yeah, okay. There we go. Yeah, closer look at that. Okay, now I'm going to let that dry. And then I'll move on to, the, uh, to doing a more highlighted step. So here my cocoon is dried. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, white. I'm just going to dry brush that on, so I'm going to use a soft uh, brush. And I'll pick, some, pick up the white paint. And I'm just going to drag that across the surface. And that, uh, that the nat let the natural texture on the object come through. But I'm still trying to keep some of that the other color, like the tan and the black. All right. So here we go. Here's our uh, cocoon. And uh, so now what I'll do is I'll let that uh, dry. And then we'll do one last step. I'm going to paint a little more white on there. Some of those. Uh, recesses are pretty dark, so I'm going to lighten those up. This is supposed to be a web. But I'm not filling them all in. I'm just kind of darkening, lighting them up a bit. Put a little bit of white in there. All right, so there we go. We've still got our texture, uh, but we fill in a little bit with the white. And uh, then we'll move on, let this dry and move on to the last step uh, as far as painting goes. Now for my last painting step, I'm just going to use this uh, paint that's called pearlescent. It's uh, not really a color, it just gives kind of a gleam to um, an object. And that makes it look a lot like web. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, the dry brush and I'll just uh, grab some of the gleams and just put it on there. It won't show up very well in the video, but um, it looks great on the object itself. Now, I didn't really paint the bottom because that's going to be on the ground and you won't see it, so. All right. So I'll try to show you that. So now I've got that finished, and uh, we'll let that dry and move on to the next step. Here's what I'm going to use for the base of the web cocoon. Um, it's just a piece of cardstock that has been painted with the dirt texture paint. If you were going to do this for uh, an indoor dungeon, you could also use the uh, stone texture paint, but uh, I want mine outdoors, so I'm going to use this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, this on there, and then I'm just going to measure, or I'm just going to draw around a base that I think is sufficient. And I want to leave a little bit of room because I'm going to do another extra thing to this, so I made it a little bigger than I might. So now I'll cut that out. There we go, I got my base. So I will uh, glue my cocoon to it with hot glue.
All right. So there we go. There is our cocoon on the base. And that would be fine. Uh, you could stop there. But I want to do one extra step that will make it a little more interesting and cool. So uh, we'll do that next. Okay, I've got it zoomed in here so you can see what I'm doing. Um, I'll let my uh, cocoon dry. So now I'm going to use my, my uh, smaller glue gun. And I'm gonna, gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the base and squirt some glue around the bottom of the base. And I'm going to kind of pull it up. So it almost looks like it's stuck to the... And the more texture you get on that, the better. All right. There you go, there. So uh, we'll do the other side and let that dry for a second. All right, I'll let that dry. So I'm going to do some more. Now I'm going to kind of pull out um, from the base. I'm just putting a little bit on there, not too much. That'll give some nice texture on there. The more glue you put, the less texture you're probably going to get, so you want to be gentle with the, with the pressure on the glue gun. Let me show you that. So see that nice gleaming texture? So now I'm going to do a little more on the side also that that's dried. So, because I had to kind of fill that in, so um, try to get an angle where you can see here. So I'm just going to kind of pull up. And I'm not putting too much glue on it. I try not to because I want to keep the texture. That the dragging the glue gun through is creating. All right. There we go, we got some nice texture on there. And uh, that's pretty much it. We'll just, I'll just do the other side. And uh, that's what the uh, cocoon will look like. Um, now I'll, uh, I'll give you an idea what it looks like next to a figure, and uh, we'll go to the table. So here we go, it's next to our uh, figure for scale. Uh, I think it looks really good, it definitely looks like there could be a person inside. Uh, it could be an egg sac uh, for spiders or some other kind of creature. It could be a cocoon that uh, a creature bursts out of and attacks the PCs. You could have an alien-like where you had a bunch of them around and the PCs have to try to get through. And if, there's, um, if they get too close to one that contains a creature that's about to hatch, it pops out and attacks the PCs. That would be a, a nice uh, encounter. Um, so there's a lot of different things you could do with this. Um, so there you go. Um, that's how you can make a cocoon or a web cocoon. And I will see you next time on Short Tip.